Motor vehicles within professional bike races are a hot topic right now, but aside from the safety issue, there are a number of pros who are concerned with the influence they are having on the outcome of races. In fact, a few high profile riders have publicly vented their frustration this year on social media. Amongst them, Andre Greipel, Dan Martin, Sepp Van Mark, and Tosh van der Sander. The question is though, how much difference do motos really make? We thought it was time for an experiment. Yeah, we're going to do multiple runs along a fairly flat section of quiet road that's just over two kilometres in length. We're going to do each run at exactly the same speed, around 43 kilometres an hour, and measure the average power each time. For the first two runs, I'm going to ride without anything in front of me, i.e. into clean air. For the second two, I will ride at around five metres behind our camera motorbike. And for the final two runs, I'll ride at around 10 metres behind the moto. I will then do the same, but in the reverse order of Dan. After which, we shall analyse the results and see what, if anything, the difference was. Right, I ended up with about 43 k's per hour average, uh, just under three minutes, two minutes 55 for that, and an average power of 319 watts. So let's do that again and then get pacey. That is so much easier. I enjoyed that. The results are in and you will see the numbers trickling down in a graphic on the screen at the moment but in terms of the percentage differences uh, for me when I was five meters behind the bike I had an average saving of just under 20 percent and when I was 10 meters behind the bike I still had a significant saving of 11 and a half percent I've done the calculations for you as well just so I okay. make sure they're right uh, if the percentage difference at five meters behind the bike view is slightly less than me, 17.3%, uh, but at 10 meters, you also had a significant saving of 10.6%, which is savings. more, much more than I was expecting, actually. I thought it would make a difference, but maybe not 10% at 10 meters. It does feel like a long way behind it, doesn't it? No, when I, when I was sat behind at 10 meters, it was like, that is a long way away. And uh, you actually wouldn't even think in a race situation that you're actually particularly close, but no. you're clearly cutting through the air far more efficiently, even at that distance. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of things also to bear in mind. Firstly, that we were doing it at our speed. Yep. 43 k's an hour, nevertheless, at the crunch point of big races, those pros on a similar road will be doing upwards of 55 kilometers per hour. And the other thing is that we did it behind one motorbike. Yep. Now, if you look at the overhead shots from the biggest races in the world, when key riders are making their attacks, there'll be multiple motorbikes and sometimes even cars uh, not too far in front of that, that make, must make a huge difference. The speed and the number of motors in terms of the difference to what we've done today, you'd imagine that the raw power and even the percentages is much greater. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, essentially like an armada or, or a flotilla of vehicles basically that you're faced with rather than one, but, but there you go. So we've concluded it makes a big difference. Do we have a solution to the problem? Well, as ever, we don't have a solution, no. but we have presented some pretty interesting data to ponder upon. And it does make you think, you know, where does the responsibility lie? Is it with the motorcyclists themselves? Is it, is it with bike riders? Is it with the race organisers? Do you know what? I think it's a collective decision that we all need to play a part in. Personally. Yeah, I've been thinking exactly the same thing whilst you were doing your last couple of runs. We need to have the motorbikes there. There is the safety part of it, but that's a completely separate thing and not what we were trying to achieve today. Uh, but we do need a motorbike still to provide us with pictures uh, for our television coverage. We also need our riders there to provide us with uh, still pictures as well. So we do need vehicles. 
instructions. I do wonder if we need less of them and that they need some more instructions to how far in front they have yeah. to be. However, they can't have their eyes on their wing mirrors at all times. So I think like you, that there has to be some responsibility from the riders to say, look, if there is a motorbike that's near enough to gain an advantage from, we go on the other side of the road. And that wouldn't always be possible when there's corners and there's only one racing line. But on a big straight road, when you're trying to catch the breakaway, ride into the wind, don't ride behind the motorbike. And I think it's fair to say, I mean, both of us have raced at a reasonable level. There's been many occasions I can remember when I've seen a motorbike go, I've come in the position where I want to attack, and I would generally follow the motorcycle, and quite often I'll follow it across the road and weave so yeah. I can stand that slipstream. So I've done it before, I know you've done it before, it's just about, I think, potentially changing our kind of mindsets, but again, Who's going to be the referee in those sorts of situations? Yeah. Is it going to be the commissaire or is it going to be one of those unwritten rules? It will be very difficult because it is second nature as a side because you're always computerised to take advantage mm -hmm. of uh, sheltering from the wind whenever you can. Anyway, I think all we can say is that there is a lot of food for thought because it does seem like motors potentially are affecting the outcome of races. And do you know what? We'd actually love to hear what you think of yeah, the subject, definitely. what your ideas are. So stick them in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to GCN, the Global Cycling Network, your one-stop shop for all things cycling, Click on the globe, it's free. Mm. Now, a couple of videos that you might be interested in watching now. Uh, there are, of course, cases where slipstreaming is legitimate, and that is behind other riders. And we show you how to ride on the wheel just down here. Or if you click just down here, me and Dan found out in very sunny and hot Andorra what difference weight makes when riding uphill. It's quite a lot, isn't it? It was, it was also significant. Significant results yet again.